Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. And today we are discussing the Linux edition of the news. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. If you'd like to catch the show live, participate in the comments and see what's going on. And maybe, hey, every once in a while we throw out an article out of the edited video. You can see what that article might have been speculate as to why i don't know but anyway we are going to chat about the linux news and we have some some interesting linux news that could deeply impact uh several linux projects and so let's go ahead and got, get on into this first and foremost if you are using arch uh excuse me if you are using windows shame on you uh, but if you're using windows and uh, like linux you can now soon say i use arch by the way on windows as an arch build is coming to ws L as the Windows uh, subset for Linux. Um, and so this is going to allow you to run an official Arch image. It's going to be maintained by the, the guys over there at the, um, the Arch uh, repo. So the uh, Arch Linux Package Manager, Robin Candeo, is the one finalizing this. And it should go live pretty soon. So if you are looking to test out some Linux stuff on Windows, you can go ahead and do that. So that's good. Maybe we'll get, uh, we'll get, we'll get Arch infecting all of these Windows computers and it'll be awesome. Right now it is, it is experimental, but you can around, at least play around with it. So uh, that is good news for those that are still on Windows. Of course, we joke about that around here. All right. Uh, this one's a, an interesting, this will be a controversial one. GTK drops X. Yikes. Here it goes, folks. <laughs> dab, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> Here goes X. <laughs> all right. uh, and so I completely understand where they're going. I think it might be a little too early. We do still have a few issues with Wayland. Uh, so first and foremost, this does not immediately say that X stops working. So that's the first thing we have to keep in mind. This is the signal for the application developers that we can't keep on relying on X on all future versions going forward. Now, I agree that X is a crazy mess, that I agree that Wayland has options. My concern with Wayland has always been and still remains, there are so many things still broken on Wayland that it causes a serious serious regression in Linux stability and usability. And we fought really hard to get Linux to this point where for the last eight years since I've been doing this channel, we have seen a tremendous improvement in Linux across every element of computer usage on the desktop. We see right now if just more people would be interested in looking at Linux or knew about it, way more people could switch to Linux if they wanted to now than could of eight years ago. The problem is with Wayland being crammed into distributions and distributions pulling out the support for X, some applications are being lost and some workflows are being lost. And what can happen is now we have a regression going back to a time when Linux just doesn't work as well. So I do agree we need something we need to do more slowly. Now what this is doing is it's going to force it. This might be one of the best things that happened. So effectively what they're doing is they are deprecating the uh, APIs and whatnot to work with X on versions going forward so that when the next version of GTK comes out, there's no more X capabilities at all. In this transitional period, which will likely take a few years, X will continue to work, but it's slowly being phased out. This is that signal for people. If you want to continue working across GNOME and other GTK heavy platforms, you're going to need to start making that transition over into Wayland. And as more people start to do that, we will get more bugs ironed out a little bit faster. So I'm not a huge fan of Wayland, as you know, if you follow this channel, but I do agree that this is a step in bringing more stability to Wayland down the road. Road, and that is a good thing. In our next article, uh, we have an issue with wireless. <laughs> uh, the manage the maintainer for the wireless drivers and Linux kernel is out of here. Peace out, yo. Didn't give us any reasons. Uh, we don't know. Is he retiring or is he just done? He basically stepped is just decided that he is 
very quickly stepping away from pretty much everything that he's doing. And so this leaves a hole. So hopefully and most likely somebody is going to jump into this. You know, some people I'm sure are going to speculate. Is it the direction of Linux? Is it the people funding Linux? Is it maybe he's just been doing this for 20 years and he's tired, wants to go do something else with his life. I completely understand that, too. Uh, he didn't talk about it and uh, it would not be wise to speculate on why he does say that this is going to impact uh, impact a number of the uh, Qualcomm drivers. Um, and, uh, there's Qualcomm and there's some Aetheros, uh, drivers as well. Uh, however, there is another person that is, uh, running a few other drivers that are, uh, are not being changed at all. So we are potentially getting, uh, going to have something going on in the networking if somebody else doesn't step up to maintain this project. Of course, if anybody does have such experience and wants to, Hey, there might be an opening for you. So have a look at that. And the last one today, this is the big one, folks. This one is huge. Uh, there is a, uh, there was a, a bare metal hosting system, Equinox, which was providing free hosting for a lot of platforms. But due to, you know, a number of different factors, some economics, some just, you know, who knows what the other factors are, they are ceasing the program, which has thus far provided free services, free hosting for a number of different Linux platforms, including, are you ready for the conspiracy theory? X. X might go away because there's no one to host it. Now, uh, there's actually uh, some some of the Wayland elements are actually hosted on this as well. So the biggest distribution this impacts is Alpine Linux, but Free Desktop, which runs X, is also impacted. Additionally, though, is WireGuard. So if you're using the WireGuard system, uh, which is an alternative to OpenVPN, so uh, WireGuard is a, apparently a, a faster, possibly even more secure VPN protocol. Uh, the one time I was building a VPN server, I chose to continue working with OpenVPN simply because uh, WireGuard requires SystemD to work and one of the computers I needed a VPN on is not running SystemD. So, um, but WireGuard is also impacted. And there are a number of other Linux projects as well. Effectively, what this means is that these projects have until the end of April to move their projects. And this isn't just simple little websites. This is... Uh, uh, this one, they said, uh, this one project here, they had said they have 400 gigabytes of databases storage and close to 100 terabytes of data storage uh, that they're going to need to migrate all of this by April. And if they don't, what's going to happen is not only do the projects go down, but all of the resources on the projects go down. This could impact updating the, the uh, applications, security implications, and a number of other things, which runs a core element of a lot of Linux systems. So that is what is going on. Presumably something or somebody will step up, you know, obviously like companies like Google and Microsoft deeply rely on Linux. We could see them coming up and sharing some of the load. Who knows what's going to go on with this, but it's definitely a, an interesting discussion. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a locals page, switch to linux.locals.com. If you want to jump on over there, help support the channel, you can join us over there. With that, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.